Spring. All right, good afternoon. Uh, this morning, the Secretary General spoke at the UN's Chiefs of Police Summit, where he said the police is a cornerstone of our peacekeeping work, as well as the vision contained in our common agenda. Um, the Secretary General added that more than ever, we need specialized policing expertise to keep the peace, maintain public order, fight organized crime, and natural resource trafficking, and advance environmentally responsive policing practices. Uh, later, just after uh, you're done with me, we will be joined by the UN's police commissioner, Luis Carrillo, and he will be joined uh, in person by the police commissioner for the Mali peacekeeping mission, Bettina Patricia Bugani, and the police commissioner for the UN interim security force for Abiy Violet Nasumba uh, Lusala. Uh, the Under Secretary General for Humanitarian Affairs, um, Martin Griffiths, uh, started a mission to Somalia today. As you know, the country is bracing, bracing for its fifth consecutive failed rainy season over the coming months. An estimated one million Somalis have been displaced by the drought, and more than 213,000 people face catastrophic food insecurity. There is an Im imminent risk of famine if crop and livestock productions fail, food prices uh, continue to rise, and those most in need do not get paid. In Somalia, Mr. Griffiths will meet with affected communities, government officials, and partner organizations to support the urgent scale-up of the response. Aid groups on the ground are doing all they can to save lives and livelihoods. At the end of July, they had provided assistance to up to 5.3 million men, women, and children in Somalia. And in staying in the Horn of Africa, in Ethiopia, our humanitarian colleagues are telling us that fighting continues in the north of the country, impacting civilians. There are reports of new displacement and increased humanitarian needs. We and our partners continue to provide humanitarian aid in the north, including in Afar, where more than 31,000 people were reached with food. More than 8,000 people have received health services since the 24th of August. In Tigray itself, 17 trucks of fertilizers were distributed um, this week to support farmers during the planting season. Also, more than 39,000 people in the northwestern zone received food assistance since last week. In Afar, tens of thousands of people have been displaced since last week from Yalo and Gulina districts bordering, in Tig bordering Tigray and from Chifra district bordering Amhara province due to the ongoing armed clashes we've been talking about. In Amhara itself, the situation is reported to be calm. In Desi town, following the movements of people who had arrived yesterday from other places in the region. A curfew is imposed on several towns in Amhara from 7 p.m. to 6 a.m. This impacts the movement of population, their access to emergency health services, and of course commercial activities. As for the roads uh, into Michele, they continue to be closed, uh, as well as the uh, air transport available to the UN continues to be uh, unaccessible. Uh, we continue to call on all parties to the conflict to take the constant care to spare civilians and civilian objects, including by allowing civilians to leave for safer areas in accordance with international humanitarian law, rapid and unimpeded humanitarian access to all those in need across northern Ethiopia remains critical. And on Yemen, the special envoy for Yemen, Hans Grunberg, uh, strongly condemned the attack that was launched from areas controlled by Ansar Allah on Sunday night into Dabab area in Taiz. The attack left a number of soldiers killed or wounded and threatens to seriously worsen the humanitarian situations for civilians. Mr. Grunberg called on the parties to seize the opportunity to provide the truce extension to demonstrate full commitment to ending the prolonged conflict in Yemen and the suffering of its people, as well as to engage with his office to continue discussions to meet the obligations they made under the truce. He said the efforts will continue to work, he will continue to work with the parties to navigate the path towards reaching a comprehensive political and peaceful settlement in the conflict. Um, and on uh, Ukraine, uh, as in many places around the world, the new academic year started today. Uh, according to the government, over 40% of schools started their studies online due to widespread damage to educational facilities and because learning spaces are used for other purposes, including hosting internally displaced people. 
As of last week, we and our partners have reached 260,000 children with educational services and learning materials. However, it's only a fraction of what is actually required, as 5 million school children and their teachers will need support until the end of the year. And on the humanitarian end, uh, we have also reached with our partners 12 million people with some form of food aid, including food, water, shelter, health services, and cash assistance. Across Ukraine, almost 18 million people need humanitarian assistance and protection. As of today, the revised humanitarian flash appeal for Ukraine is 57 percent funded, with $246 billion out of the required $4.9 billion, uh, which has been generously committed uh, by donors, but more is needed to cover the upcoming needs in the winter. Uh, and staying on that same subject of back to school, UNESCO data shows that 244 million children worldwide uh, and children and youth between the age of 6 and 18 are still out of school. It shows that in sub-Saharan Africa remains the region with the most children and youth out of school, with a total of 98 million children in sub-Saharan Africa. It is only the, also the only region where that number is increasing. Uh, UNESCO's Director General, Audrey Azoulé, called for a collective mobilization to ensure that the right of every child to access quality education is respected. Um, and she will, of course, take place in the um, Transforming Education Summit that will take place on the 19th of September here in New York. A uh, quick update from Thailand, where the UN team, uh, led by resident coordinator Gita uh, Sabarwal, is helping authorities improve green technologies. We, with our par we're partnering with 300 companies to cut food waste by up to 10 percent. With 15,000 young Thais, we develop real-time tracker to keep organic waste in check. And to cut emissions, the UN Industrial Development Organization and 70 large and medium-sized companies are improving resource efficiency and clean production processes in the main polluting industries. Um, and for its part, UNEP is also supporting a 10 percent increase in organic rice production. The UN has also brought together 43 banks and investors to commit $1.3 trillion for the Sustainable Development Goals, including on climate action. A quick update from UN Women. The LC Initiative Fund for, UN, for Uniformed Women in Peace Operations, which is hosted by UN Women, today announced that the Ghana Armed Forces will receive $3.7 million over the next three years to increase the deployment of military women to UN peace operations and to make security institutions more gender inclusive. Ghana is currently the seventh highest contributor to UN peacekeeping. With this grant, Ghana will deploy a gender strong unit that's a military battalion with substantial representation of women overall, including in command positions, to the UN interim force in Lebanon for three years and beyond. And staying in Lebanon, I uh, have a senior personnel appointment. Uh, today, uh, Secretary General is appointing Imran Riza of Pakistan as his new Deputy Special Coordinator for Lebanon, as well as Resident Humanitarian Coordinator for Lebanon. Uh, he will also serve as Humanitarian Coordinator for Lebanon. Uh, Mr. Riza su um, succeeds Najat Roshdi of Morocco, uh, who recently completed her assignment and to whom the Secretary General is grateful for her accomplishments. He wishes her continued success in the new appointment as the Deputy Special Envoy for Syria. And our friend um, Imran Riza brings over 35 years of international experience across the system, mainly in field settings. Uh, we congratulate him and much more on, his, on him and his bio. Finally, before we get to questions that you may have, uh, we have a new member state uh, who's paid its membership dues in full. Um, that member state consists of 32 small and large islands, only nine of which are inhabited. The country is home to the oldest botanical garden in the Western Hemisphere, formed in 1765. And Mustique is one of the uh, 32 islands. What country are we talking about? You're all St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Shall I ask myself the question you're all going to ask? <laughs> we'll go with Edie first. Uh, Thank you, Steph. First, um, does the Secretary General have a reaction to the report by outgoing UN High Commissioner for Human Rights, Michelle Bachelet, on the Uyghur issue in Xinjiang? 
Yes, uh, I can tell you that the Secretary General has read the report, uh, read, excuse me, the Secretary General has read the assessment uh, that clearly identifies serious human rights violations in the Xinjiang region of China. Uh, the assessment done uh, by the Office of the High Commissioner for Human Rights also confirms what the Secretary General has been saying on Xinjiang for quite some time, that human rights must be respected and that the Uyghur community needs to be respected and made feel it belongs to the country as a whole without discrimination. Uh, the Secretary General very much hopes that the government of China will take on board the recommendations put forward uh, in the assessment by the High Commissioner for Human Rights. Um, the assessment also underscores the importance of the independence of the Office of the High Commissioner for Human Rights. Um, as a follow-up, is the Secretary General planning to uh, pursue or ask for any specific follow-up actions in terms of further investigations, accountability? Well, uh, the the, the follow-up uh, recommendations are put forward by uh, the High Commissioner. They're, for, uh, they're addressed to the government of China and the international community. Uh, you know, I think this, for the Secretary General, I think it will allow him to uh, enhance his advocacy on human rights, including the belief that uh, minorities need to be protected the world over. James. Secretary General has uh, written a letter to the Security Council saying he intends to appoint Abdullah Bathali as his new special representative for Libya. Now, that appointment was being opposed by Prime Minister De Beba in Tripoli. Has he managed to persuade the Prime Minister in, in Tripoli, or is he just proceeding anyway? The, the, the process uh, for naming special representatives uh, is well-oiled one. Uh, it includes many consultations. Um, I think the fact that the letter has been written is, uh, is an open secret, so it's not for me to, to confirm. It's only half of the process. We need to get a letter back uh, from the Security Council, at which point we'll confirm the appointment. Okay. Secretary General has written, written a letter to the Security Council saying he intends to appoint the former president of Kyrgyzstan, Rosa Utenbaeva, as the new special representative for Afghanistan. Um, did he deliberately choose a woman from an Islamic nation at this time, given the criticism of the Taliban of their treatment of, of women and girls? Um, Secretary General uh, chooses his special representative through a, an assessment process and through an interview process. And he has been... Uh, clearly from the start of his term, very much forward leaning in ensuring that we have parity uh, at the senior most leadership uh, levels in terms of gender. Um, any more letters? I, I, do you want to go through? Oh, well, no, through I, the I don't have box? any more. I don't have yeah, any more. Yeah. But, but I do have one other question for you, and, and it's not on, I will come to some later on perhaps on, 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 on the... Um, on the Uyghur report, but um, Martin Griffiths' visit, uh -huh. there are all sorts of reports that famine is going to be declared soon in Somalia. D does the UN believe that is going to happen? Tell us a little bit more about the, pr the process of how, yeah, how this happens and, and, and how concerned is the Secretary General? Well, we're extremely concerned about the situation in Somalia as we've been, uh, I think, highlighting it on a number of occasions, and just even today, the, the, the millions of people uh, who are food insecure. There is a process uh, for the UN in, 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 uh, in labeling a situation of famine, which includes a lot of technical consultations uh, with different, the different food-related agencies in, in the UN and experts. Uh, we do hope to have uh, Martin Griffiths brief you uh, from Mogadishu likely on Tuesday, and he'll give you an update then. Michelle. Thank you, Steph. Um, when can we expect an announcement of Bachelet's replacement? I think when white smoke comes out of the 38th floor. Today? Tomorrow? Keep, keep an eye. I, I doubt it will be, uh, it will be today. Uh, but, you know, look, look at that camera trained on the 39th floor. Is um, the Secretary General disappointed at all in the way... Um, the Uyghur report was released at the 11th hour of Ms. Bachelet's term. The, the, the Secretary General has always respected the independence of, uh, of, of Madame Bachelet and how she's done about her work, and it's not for him to uh, analyze, comment, or otherwise talk about that. And the Chinese ambassador um, yesterday said that, you know, that obviously they oppose this report and that it could harm 
relations between the UN and a member state. Um, is the Secretary General concerned at all about any action that China might take? Has he spoken with um, any Chinese officials above the ambassador here about this report to try and maybe... No, not th him? there's been no conversation uh, as of... The f as, as, I, as I was walking up onto this, uh, this podium with the Secretary General. Uh, I think it's also very important for everyone uh, to see the Chinese response, right? I mean, the, the High Commissioner's Office also published a long annex uh, from, the, uh, from the government of China. I think it's also very important to, to look and, and, read, uh, and, and read that. Um, the Secretary General uh, values uh, the, 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 I would say, the system-wide cooperation uh, between China and the United Nations on a whole host of issues. Uh, China is an extremely valuable partner, and we very much hope that that cooperation will continue. Betul. Um, thanks, Steph. Uh, first, a quick follow-up on James' question on Somalia. Can you remind us if there has been any uh, grain export from Ukraine to Somalia, or does the UN plan to export no, so, Ukrainian grains uh, to uh, there has been one country? For S Somalia uh, specifically, uh, there has been one. Um, uh, there has been one. Um, ship that docked in Djibouti that will go f to Ethiopia. The second ship uh, carrying flour, which is to be milled in Turkey, will then go to Yemen. Uh, I, I'm not aware of any sh ship at this point leaving Ukraine for Somalia, but obviously there are all sorts of other sources of, uh, of grain uh, and food that we use. And just a clarification, since you said that the Secretary General supports the report of the outgoing Human Rights Commissioner, so does he think that the human rights violations in Xinjiang uh, may constitute human, uh, crimes against humanity? And also we heard from some diplomats that uh, Michelle Bachelet was under a lot of pressure, so she waited for the release of the report until her I last mean, I day. I think that, that's uh, Does the SG uh, believe that she was under support, uh, under uh, pressure? Uh, did the UN uh, had any pressure on, on that report? That, that, that's a question for, for her office. I know that the Secretary General and Madame Bachelet had not, have not spoken in the run-up uh, last few days in the run-up to the publication of the assessment. Uh, it is, um, it's not a, uh, it, her office is, in, is worked independently of the Secretary General on this, and uh, so I think you have to ask her. Uh, on, the, uh, on the issue uh, of, of what you mentioned that's in the report, that is a, an assessment that needs to be made in any, whichever case we're talking about, right? Uh, that's an assessment that needs to be, um, uh, needs to be conducted uh, by an appropriate judicial uh, body. It is not an assessment that a secretary general uh, makes. Uh, Stefano, oh, sorry, uh, sorry, go ahead. Thank you very much. Um, can you uh, confirm, as uh, Director Grossi said, that the intention, the hope, is to leave some inspector or personnel in uh, Zaporizhia? And apart from what uh, Grossi says, could you elaborate on what is the plan, the vision of the SG to uh, Zaporizhia and all the sensitive sides? No, I mean, the, the, the vision of the SG is that the IEA mission uh, goes, and it has, as we've, we, we know, it's, it's there. Uh, the Secretary General has spent a lot of time supporting this mission. Our colleagues on the security and the logistics end, I think, have done a tremendous job in getting uh, the people there. My understanding is that uh, some inspectors uh, will stay behind, but I think all of those kind of granular details you need to check with, with Vienna. Nada. Thanks, Stefan. Two follow-up questions on Xinjiang and the report. First, you say that this will help the Secretary General enhance his advocacy. Mm -hmm. I mean, does that extend to himself trying to get a fact-finding mission together for the Secretary General himself, not just waiting on the Human Rights Council? And secondly, Michelle Bachelet has, has talked about the pressure she received from Chinese officials. I wonder, has the Secretary General, in his dealing with Chinese officials, uh, spoken about 
this issue and had pushback to the reports? I, I, I'm not aware that this issue has been raised directly, and I think all member states understand uh, the independence which which the Secretary General has treated uh, Ms. Bachelet during her during her tenure. Um, I really on on kind of next actions. I really don't have anything to add to what I've what I've said. Stefano and then Alan. Let's follow up on the uh, report about China. Uh, you say that the Secretary General didn't read anything of uh, of so the report. Somebody's got a phone. I like the music, but go ahead. Uh, the Secretary General didn't read anything about the report until, I believe, yesterday, right? Um, I am curious about the language in the report. That is, for example, this says these allegations of part of torture, of treatment, including false medical treatment, are credible. Uh, does the Secretary General believe that this is the correct uh, terminology, or maybe it should be that uh, are proven? I mean, is is Secretary General? Not only didn't, I mean, he, he's, he did not line edit this report. He did not see the report before it came out. Any questions as to the wording, the content, words that were used, words that weren't used, words that were used in, in places you think they should not be, should go to Geneva. I, it's not for me to, to, oh, to I mean, I, I've, 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 I think I've, I've explained uh, what the Secretary General's reaction is to the assessment. Uh, we're not doing a, a line edit analysis. No, but then I rephrase my question that maybe is not clear. Uh, does the Secretary General agree that the report is strong enough, is on the point, or he thinks that the language should be even, you know, the reporter should have, a, for example, the word genocide is never mentioned. Does the Secretary General think that this report should be stronger than what okay. appears? The, the, I think I've, I've expressed what, uh, Secretary General's reaction was. I mean, he read the assessment, felt it identifies uh, serious human rights violations, and of course he's uh, concerned about what he's read. But I, I'm not going to I'm not going to do a, a a book critic of the of of this uh, this assessment. Steph, uh, I, uh, just quickly on that note, is there anything in the report that the Secretary General is particularly shocked by? No, I think he's he's concerned about what he's read. Mr. Bulkati. Thank you, Stefan. Uh, Russian Defense Ministry today, it's about the IAA mission, the Zaporozhye nuclear power plant. Russian Defense Ministry today stated that uh, the Ukrainian group of saboteurs tried to, uh, attempted to um, seize, to capture the station in order to use the mission as a human shield. So they were neutralized, according to the Defense Ministry, and uh, the officials of Russian Defense Ministry express bewilderment, I quote, uh, due to the lack of reaction of the UN Secretary General to this incident. Do you have any reaction in this regard? You know, we're, we are glad that the Russian Federation did what it needed to do to keep, uh, keep our, the, the inspectors uh, safe. I think uh, our security people, our drivers, have done a tremendous job in getting uh, the IEA inspectors in. Um, they will continue to support the mission until it ends. And it is, um, like with any UN uh, mission, it is the responsibility of those uh, in, um, uh, who have uh, power over a certain area and who are responsible for a certain area to keep uh, UN staff uh, safe. Edward. Uh, just to follow up, uh, because you said the UN would uh, offer the logistics and the security support to the mission in Zaporizhia. Um, are there any UN security um, personnel with the, the, the mission? Uh, so so since, since, since there are people from the UN security uh, the, there, uh, you know, before this, Ukrainian side and Russian side, they are accusing each other of shelling or sabotaging the, the nuclear plant. So now UN has the first hand, I mean, at least security personnel there. So they can make a judgment now. First of all, they don't, they don't have, the, these are people who are there to provide close security. They are not there to do ballistics, right? They don't have the, the, the know-how, they don't have the technology nor do they have the mandate to do logistic, uh, you know, ballistics assessment, uh, looking at shells that come in, where they came in, making, uh, that's just not their 
their job. Their focus uh, is to keep our people safe, uh, working with the, uh, the authorities uh, who are in charge in the areas in which uh, they are located. Okay, another question is on the uh, fact-finding mission of Olen oh, Oleni Vick, yeah. Oleni Vick yeah. sorry. It's okay. Uh, we, we haven't heard a lot, a lot from, from the mission after you announced three names on the, on the mission. What's going on there? Any the, new the, development? The contacts are continuing uh, with the Russian Federation, uh, with, the, the, with Ukraine, on uh, ensuring the, the safe passage uh, of the mission, which I think both sides have, uh, have welcomed. I mean, I, I saw General uh, Santos Cruz uh, this morning, uh, and that's exactly what he told me. Uh, let's go around to Edie. Um, on Ethiopia, since uh, there's also very serious food crisis and the threat of famine there, and uh, Ethiopia is very close to Somalia, is Martin Griffiths planning at all to go to Ethiopia and also to possibly try and do uh, something about helping to restore a ceasefire. At, at, at this point, uh, his mission uh, will be is focused on, on the situation in, in Somalia. Uh, we remain, of course, uh, in touch on the ground with all the parties in Ethiopia. Um, to try to uh, to gain to to to, to reopen humanitarian access. Uh, I mean, even without uh, the the current wave of violence that we're seeing, the situation in parts of Ethiopia on the humanitarian end uh, were dramatic. Uh, the continued conflict, uh, and that's why we've been calling for cessation of hostility, just makes things that much more difficult uh, for the civilians. And in Tigray, um, you talked about some mm -hmm. deliveries mm -hmm. uh, being made. Um, did the UN get back any of the fuel from those no, or those no, twelve no, I'm trucks? Not aware, I'm not aware that they have. Uh, obviously, I think they still there were other there were other sources of, uh, of fuel that we still have. But the point is, we're not getting the tankers in that we uh, that that we need. Uh, James, and then we'll go to the screen. Then we'll come back to Frank. Okay, uh, I've got a couple of questions. Um, picking up on the Uyghur report, um, in just over two weeks, it's high-level week, um, we have um, the State Councillor and Foreign Minister of China, Wang Yi, who will be here in New York. Given the Secretary General has read this report and you've said how concerned he is about what he's read, will he be raising it with the Chinese Foreign Minister? Let's wait for the readout and let's wait for the meeting. Okay. Um, and, and another question about the late release of the report. It came finally 13 minutes before midnight in Geneva, 13 minutes before um, uh, Madame Bachelet's term was up as High Commissioner. Um, and I know you, you said that mm -hmm. you know there's, there's independence of her office, but it's still somewhat suspicious why it came so late. I mean, normal procedure would be you produce a report, you show China, and then you take their reaction and incorporate it in the report. But it does raise the question, was there last minute back and forth with China? Can you confirm that that no, was I, not I, taking I, I'm place? Not, I'm, it, not for me to, to, to confirm. What I can tell you is that, like you, I saw Ms. Bachelet's public statements that she would release a report before she left. Granted, it was 13 minutes before, but it was before she, she, left, uh, she left office. And I think the, the High Commissioner's office also uh, put online the, uh, the annex, uh, the, 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 the response, so to speak, uh, by the government of China at almost the same time. And one other question on a different issue, if I can. Um, in Moscow, the chairman of the Russian oil and gas company, Lukoil, has died. And we're told he fell out of a hospital window. Um, he, um, his company, one of the few Russian companies that had criticized the invasion of Ukraine, we've now had at least five suspicious deaths of prominent Russian businessmen. Is the UN concerned? What is it, what's its message to the, to the Russian authorities about what sort of investigation no, should no, take place? No, no visibility on that, but clearly, like any death, uh, should be uh, thoroughly investigated. Okay, let's go to the screen for a second. We'll go Iftikhar. Uh, thank you, uh, thank you, Steph. I 
I jumped a little bit late, but did you have an update on the flood situation in Pakistan? And also, how is the uh, flood appeal doing? Sorry, say second part. Oh, the flash appeal. Uh, I do not. I hope to have an. Um, I hope to have a um, an update t tomorrow, uh, which will hopefully also include where we are with the uh, with the money. Uh, Oscar, you, Oscar, and then we'll come back to the room. Thank you, Stefan. Stefan, uh, question is: If the UN have sent any commission to verify these uh, denounces of human rights violations in Nicaragua? And what is the secretary reaction or concern on President Ortega's actions tend to reverberate throughout Central America? Well, we, I think uh, both the Secretary General and the High Commissioner for Human Rights have expressed some s very serious and grave concerns about uh, the human rights situation in Nicaragua, including the, 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 the shrinking of space uh, for civil society and the detention of, uh, of a bishop. Um, and we hope that the government of Nicaragua will uh, take uh, heed of those uh, those concerns. Uh, Thank you. Betul, oh sorry, Ephraim, you haven't gone, and then Betul. Thank you, Stefan. Just a quick uh, question on the process of selecting an SRSG for Libya. Does this process um, say that the Secretary General has to get uh, the approval of the UN-backed government in Tripoli, or it can just be done through the Security the, the, Council. The, How important is it? The process involves uh, lots of consultations, right, which are exactly that, um, and then an exchange of letter with the Security Council. The Security Council uh, has the authority to, uh, what, you know, it's usually done under a sil procedure of silence, break the silence, in which case there is no return letter. Right, in which case the appointment is not not made, and we've seen that a number of times in the in the past. So that's that's the procedure. It's broader consultations, and then an exchange of letter with the Security Council. But what happens with the government, the actual it's government? It's part concern. of that consultation process. But the it, the person is it's not consultations. Okay, thank you, Beitoul. Um, thank you, Steph. Two more questions on Afghanistan. Has the UN received any request from the Taliban to come and attend the high-level week here uh, in New York? And also, the visa waiver uh, for 13 Taliban members expired a while ago, and uh, they have been criticized for going to Qatar, Doha, and enjoying the luxury hotels, but not doing enough, especially to protect women's and girls' rights in Afghanistan. Uh, does the SG uh, think uh, that uh, the visa waiver should be extended for the Taliban? Uh, that, that's a decision to, to be made with, by the Security Council. I mean, there are discussions going on. I'm not going to get in the middle of it. Uh, I'm not aware of any requests from the de facto authorities. Uh, or any letters coming from the de facto authorities, I can check uh, with our uh, with our people. The, the, we continue to be extremely worried about the situation of human rights for women and girls, and that in Afghanistan, that is something we continue to push with the Af with the uh, the Taliban. And do you know who's going to represent Afghanistan well, the, at the, the high level the, week? The, 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 there's been no change in the credentials uh, and in the situation, I think, since, uh, since, last, since last year. Okay, uh, thank you all. Uh, and I shall get our guests for the police. Please stay, otherwise you will be... Please stay.